Good evening. Oh, we're live there. Good evening, everyone. This is Taylor Marshall, and I wanted to jump on and talk a little bit about Passion Sunday. Also share some uh, tips on how you and your family can celebrate Passion Sunday, uh, even though you may not be able to attend Mass, sadly, tomorrow. So before we do that, uh, I'm going to share the reading, the traditional reading for Passion Sunday. And when you understand why this reading was chosen for the fifth Sunday in Passion, you'll understand why we veil images beginning on this Sunday. This is something that's been lost since Vatican II. Paul VI changed it. I'll mention that briefly how it got changed. Um, but the gospel that's appointed for Passion Sunday pretty much says it all, and it's not that long. So I'm going to read the whole gospel. It's a gospel taken from St. John's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 46 through 59. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time, Jesus said to the multitude of the Jews, Which of you shall convince me of sin? If I say the truth to you, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth the words of God. Therefore, you hear them not, because you are not of God. The Jews, therefore, answered and said to him, Do not we say well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father. And you have dishonored me. But I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Amen, amen, I say to you, if any man keep my word, he shall not see death forever. The Jews therefore said, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If any man keep my word, he shall not taste death forever? Art thou greater than our father Abraham, who is dead, and the prophets, who are dead? Whom, thou make, whom dost thou make thyself? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father that glorifieth me, of whom you say that he is your God, and you have not known him, but I know him. And if I shall say that I know him not, I shall be to you a I shall be like to you a liar. But I do know him, and do keep his word. Abraham your father rejoiced that he might see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jews therefore said to him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham was made, I am. They took up stones, therefore, to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Jesus Christ. So in this gospel, we read, uh, Christ is beginning to manifest himself to his people, to the Jews, and they outright reject him. They don't just say, you have some bad ideas, you're crazy. They say, you have a devil. You are possessed by a devil, Jesus of Nazareth. And so Christ convicts them, and he says that he's in perfect concord with the Father, with whom he's consubstantial. And then, once he rattles their cage about Abraham, and how Abraham looked forward to see him, they want to stone him. Okay, so this is where they begin to want to kill him. And it says Jesus hid himself. Now, St. Augustine says that he made himself invisible. He vanished and he left the temple. So there's some kind of a miracle here. Uh, the epistle of Hebrews, St. Paul says that the veil of the temple is a type of the flesh of Christ. And so Christ veiled his glory, the Holy of Holies, his divinity from the Jews. And when they wanted to kill him, they wanted to stone him. But the problem with stoning is, is when you stone someone, they may bleed a little bit, but they don't bleed. They don't bleed like you would if you were crucified. And it's important that our Lord was crucified so that he would shed his blood for us. So it's not fitting that the Messiah would die by stoning. He needed to be hung upon the tree, as it says in the Old Testament, and he needed to shed out all of his blood like a Passover lamb. Now, this gospel for the fifth Sunday of Lent moves us from Laetare Sunday, 
which is the rose code. It was sort of a, repre a reprieve, a rest. Now we really get into Lent. Now is the time of suffering. Now people are trying to kill Jesus. The Jews are after him. They want to stone him. And so it's these last two weeks of Lent when things get really serious. And that's why this Sunday is called the Passion. And because Christ hid himself in this gospel, we hide Christ. Chiefly, we veil the crucifix. And we also veil all the other sacred images in our ch churches traditionally. Now, before I show the, the video footage of how to veil your images, I want to share with you a little bit of the history because I've been posting on this on social media all day. I did a video of it last year called Why Do We Veil Our uh, Images on Passion Sunday. And people have been saying, Taylor, you got it all wrong. Uh, Tomorrow is not Passion Sunday. Passion Sunday is Palm Sunday. Now, this is a confusion because in the Roman Rite, there is the first Sunday of Lent, the second Sunday of Lent, the third Sunday of Lent, then there's the fourth Sunday. That's the rose colored. It's Laetare. It's a reprieve. We're over halfway done with Lent. And then the fifth Sunday is called the Sunday of the Passion. And then the sixth Sunday is called Palm Sunday. And then Pascha, Resurrection, Easter. Now, up until 1959, from as far back as you can ever remember, the fifth Sunday of Lent was called Passion Sunday. This was true even amongst like Lutherans and Episcopalians. But in 1960, Pope John XXIII changed a bunch of things. He issued a code of rubrics, and he changed the name to the first Sunday of the Passion for Sunday 5, and then the second Sunday of the Passion, also known as Palm Sunday. So he modified the terminology. So you'll see this, for example, in a 1962 Missal. This is one of the reasons why I like the old 1945 Missal. These kind of oddities don't exist there. It's another reason why we like the pre-55 Missals. If you watch my YouTube channel, you know how I talk about this all the time. I also discuss it in my book, Infiltration, because it's a really big deal. The changes that were begun in 1951 and into 1955 are a big deal. I have a visitor. Then, in 1969, when the Novus Ordo was issued by Pope Paul VI, he completely scrapped Passion Sunday, and instead, it's just Palm Sunday, also known as Passion Sunday. So it's in the Novus Ordo, it's gone. Passion Sunday is, is basically the fifth Sunday is, is no longer there. And this has led to a lot of confusion. People who are older remember that we veiled the images in Lent. This happened on Passion Sunday. But the Novus Ordo no longer has a Passion Sunday on the fifth Sunday of Lent. So people make ad hoc solutions. They say, oh, well, we should veil the images all during Lent. So some places uh, on Ash Wednesday start veiling. That's not technically correct. Other people are like, oh, we should start veiling on Passion Sunday. But now Passion Sunday is Palm Sunday, the sixth Sunday of Lent. So let's veil the images then. Most places in the Novus Ordo world, they don't veil at all, or it's just limited. Maybe they'll veil the cross. So what we need to advocate as Catholics is restoring the Roman rite, restoring our ancient Roman patrimony, the authentic liturgy, and not monkeying with it as they did, as they began to do in 1951 up through 1955, then 1960, and then ultimately in 1969. Uh, as I mentioned before, the idea of the veil from the epistle to the Hebrews, in there, St. Paul talks about the veil being the flesh of Christ. And it is the, the veil in the temple hides the glory of God in the Holy of Holies. So we see the humanity of Christ and the divinity of Christ. And in this gospel that I read already, for those of you just joining us, it's the uh, gospel of St. John chapter 8. It's the one appointed for Sunday, fifth Sunday. Uh, it talks about how Christ hid himself so that he wouldn't be stoned, so that he could go the distance and be crucified for us and shed his blood and have his body lifted up to redeem 
the whole world. So that's the theology of veiling. And there's more to it as well. Everything that is sacred, we veil. We're supposed to veil the tabernacle. We veil the altar with frontals. We veil nuns. We veil priests and all the vestments they wear. We veil bishops um, and women. Traditionally, going back to the time of St. Paul, it's in 1 Corinthians, Pope St. Linus, the second pope, said that all women should wear a veil when they enter into liturgy or into the churches of God. So women also are veiled. And it's interesting, I think we mentioned this in a, in a podcast earlier this week, that the term apocalypse in Greek means to take away the veil. Apocalypse means to unveil. So in the 1960s, the 1970s, when we took the veils off the tabernacle, we took the veils off the nuns, we took the veils off the altar, we took the veils off the women, um, everything was unveiled. And if you were speaking Greek, you would say, this is apocalypse. This is apocalyptic. When the holy things are now laid bare to the world. That should scare us. Okay, so I'm going to run a video now. This was, uh, I took this video just, let's see, it's uh, 8.44 now. I took this around uh, I think 2 o'clock today. Uh, our family got together and we veiled the crucifixes and the statues in our house. I told all the kids, hey, go to your rooms. I want you to find every single statue and crucifix. Bring them on down to the kitchen table. And we're going to have a craft. We're going to do something fun. And so I'm just going to run a little bit of video here. You can see the Marshall family at work and how we veiled images because if you can't go to mass in the morning you're not going to be able to experience the tradition of the veiled images so we should bring those traditions home most of you will be live streaming uh catholic masses into your home tomorrow so you won't have the option to be actually at a mass so this is a good idea you could do it tonight or maybe tomorrow as you set up your home altar and you put out some candles and you transform your living space into a chapel. Maybe before you do all that, you can get some fabric. Uh, what you're about to see is a purple curtain that we cut up into veils. Uh, if you have a purple blanket, a purple sheet, anything that's violet, if you don't have that, use another somber color. Maybe you have black or maybe you have burlap or something like that. I wouldn't use you know, gold or white or pink or something uh, celebratory, but use something somber. So here is the Marshall family veiling our images. Smile, Mom. I might know where they are. So I'll pause here. We got a bunch of, these are all statues. Most of these statues I've picked up when I'm in Rome. I try to get a statue of every kid's name and confirmation saint and middle name and all that so I do it you put it around him yeah i'm gonna just kind of make a little over this is a cool saint michael statue let me see if i can find it here look at that that guy right there i'm gonna just kind of make a little rectangular strips and we're gonna put it over and then kind of cinch it at the bottom on everything so this is just kind of a sheer purple curtain and then let me back up here and then Joy bought some, um, it's kind of a brown, uh, I don't know, it's not string, but it's, uh, I don't know what, what you would call that. Maybe some women in the chat can help me out. But we bought a spool of that so we could tie the fabric around the images. Yeah, yeah. No, but tell me that's... Here, I can do it. Mom, we have some right. So yeah, we tied it off like that. There. So we used rubber bands. Uh, the little kids couldn't really do the tie, so we got rubber bands. And so they would rubber band the bottom, and then we would bring some of that nice, whatever that string stuff is, and we would tie it on top of the rubber band to kind of give it a finished look. And I'll get a rubber band. This is mine. Got a rubber band. Hold on, I'm going to twist it. And then you can tie it. If y'all like this, please hit the like button. Appreciate it. Here's Our Lady, I think, of Fatima. 
adding her to the mantle. There's all the all of them so far. You can see how we kind of tied them off with that uh, brown stringy stuff. If anyone knows the name of it. Oh, oh so here we go. Melba says it's, here we go. Raffia is the stringy stuff. Melba, thanks for that. That's what that stuff is that we use to tie it off. My wife would know. She's the one who ordered it. She got it on Amazon. Thanks for all the likes, everybody. Appreciate it. So, oh, it's Apple. This, this image. Let's see if I can get it right here of the Blessed Mother, the big statue. That's the statue of Our Lady. I really love that statue. She stays on our mantle year round. And when we do the family rosary, uh, this is our focus of attention is this statue. So in the evenings, we light these candles here. And uh, that's our year round statue of Our Lady that we do family rosary with. Oh, it's apple. So there's Beckett. He did his St. Joseph. He's pretty proud of it. Did that one all by himself. He didn't want to take this picture. He was like, I'm still in my jammies, but you know, co hashtag quarantine. And then there's a nice St. Clair right there with the raffia around the bottom. And it kind of worked out well. This, this stuff was pretty sheer and I've seen people at churches sometimes use uh, sheer covering so i think that's okay it's what we had again this was just like a, a purple sheer curtain that we cut up it had uh seams in it and hem and hemming we just sort of cut around that and that's our our family crucifix uh it turned out really nice i really like how that looks it's really cool and we when we do our live stream sunday mass we bring that into our family room and that's sort of our main crucifix and so this sunday it'll be veiled like that there's a close-up of the raffia and the and a crucifix and make sure you get palms on palm sunday i don't know if churches are going to distribute palms but we bought a palm it's part of our lenten display Okay, so there it is. You know it's legit because I'm wearing the same shirt still. So that's our Lenten display. And at the end, I mentioned get some palms. Uh, Joy thought of that. She picked up a palm. She was at the store. Uh, I think she's at the grocery store. She saw the palm and she's like, oh, we need that. Because, I mean, I don't know if churches are going to distribute palms. I, I hope they will. But anyway, we thought we're going to put our passion Lenten display up by the front door. And so Joy bought a palm and... I guess if churches don't distribute palms, I hope they do, uh, we'll cut that up. And on Sunday morning, everybody will have a piece of that palm plant and um, we'll sing and, and we'll do our best to have a home, a home dry mass and a live stream and, you know, try to make it special. Maybe we'll do a procession outside the house or inside the house or everywhere. Maybe we'll get some incense, but we'll definitely do a family palm Sunday uh, celebration and procession. So I would encourage you guys, the point here tonight is, look, because of this Corona situation, most of us don't have masses. Uh, we can't go to church. Uh, all of these traditions are taken away from us. So let's just not shrug and lose them. Let's be proactive. Let's do the uh, traditions of our church. Let's have holy water in the house. Let's veil the images. Let's get some palms. Um, on Easter Sunday, we won't be able to go in and see all the, the candles and the lilies and all that. Let's buy lilies and make an altar in our home to the resurrected Jesus. Let's incorporate some of the Holy Week traditions. And, I, and people have been asking me, and I'm probably going to do this uh, next week with one of the guests, is we'll do how to do Holy Week at home in the Corona situation. So if you like that, give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. And we'll try to put together a show with some ideas on how to keep these things alive during Holy Week, especially Maundy Thursday, Good Friday. And I even joked with Joy, I was like, maybe on um, 
Easter vigil, we should just stay up all night. And uh, we probably won't do that, but uh, we got to do something to keep these traditions alive this year, even though we can't be in our churches with our priests, with the official liturgies of the church. So we're going to have to to work together, be creative and keep it alive. So anyway, I just want to show that. Uh, make sure that you watch the beginning of this video if you came in late. Um, there's also another video I have on YouTube called Why Do We Veil Images? It goes more into the theology of veiling. Um, but in reality, it's that Christ himself himself veiled himself in the incarnation and then later manifested his divinity. Of course, he did that at the transfiguration, but he does it most perfectly at his glorious resurrection and then his ascension. So everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you all have a blessed Passion Sunday tomorrow. Um, even if you don't attend the trad traditional Latin mass, you can still go along with us in the traditional world and and count the fifth Sunday of Lent as Passion Sunday and veil your images. And uh, let's pray for one another. Let's keep uh, joy during this time. Let's not be discouraged. Let's make acts of perfect contrition. And let's make spiritual communions tomorrow. And let's worship the Lord and keep holy the Sabbath day. Keep holy the Lord's day. So everybody, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the like button. And uh, if you would subscribe, hit the notification. I think during the next week, I'll be doing more random videos like this, um, just sort of off the cuff, talking about things, ideas, traditions, Holy Week, etc. So make sure you subscribe. And uh, thanks for all the support on Patreon, especially this last week. Lots of new patrons. I'll be sending you your signed books and other things. You can do that at patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. And really the most important thing you can do is hit the share button and share this video on Facebook or Twitter or share it with some friends. Um, share it with your spouse, you know, share it with your parents, share it with your children or your adult children. Say, hey, you guys should veil images tomorrow. And even if you don't have enough cloth for everything, maybe just veil the crucifix and have something veiled to remind yourself this is Passion Sunday. Okay, before I leave, I'll do three questions three questions. So uh, if you have a question, put a question mark on it so I know it is. And um, I'll try to answer it. The first one comes from Dean. Thank you, Dean. Uh, if you have a makeshift altar at home, is there a specific number of candles that is proper? So a high mass is six candles, but if you have a bishop, it's seven candles. And if it's a low mass, it's two lit candles. And so I would encourage you to have at least two candles on your altar. And if you're live streaming a high mass, maybe it's a good opportunity to teach your family and say, hey, since we're live streaming a high mass, let's do six candles. But bare minimum would be two candles on the altar. Good question, Dean. And I think, you know, again, there's no rules for home live streaming, but I think we can uh, appropriate and approximate the best we can. All right. Another question. Ah, good one. Dan T. Where do you live stream a TLM? There are so many places. Live Mass, I think it's livemass.net. Someone can correct me in the comments, is a great place for the Trinity of St. Peter. Um, the SSPX is live streaming. We last Sunday did the Institute of Christ the King, and it was an excellent live stream. Good camera uh, quality, good choir, excellent priest. He was perfect in the rubrics, and he gave, gave an excellent homily. His name was Canon. Tala Rico or Rica Tale, something like that. He was excellent. So I would I would probably tell you to stream that Institute of Christ the King one, even though I'm a fraternity guy. I really, we really, really did like that one. Okay, and then one more question before we sign off tonight. Uh, let's see. Boy, a lot of them coming in now. Uh, someone said, do I need purple? That's tradition. You should use purple. If you don't have it, use black or burlap if you can. Um, let's see. Ah, okay. And then, uh, Louis Bourbon, cool name. Where did you get your family crucifix? Uh, I think you're talking about, let me go in here. Uh, the, the Are you talking one? about this one right there? Uh, we bought that in Assisi, Italy. We were in Assisi and we saw it in a shop 
uh, I think even I saw it in the shop and then Joy saw it in the shop and they were like, I saw this amazing crucifix and we had both seen the same one. Uh, there was a crucifix like this that was much smaller when, when Joy and I were much younger and we were in Rome and it was very much smaller and we just didn't have the money and we couldn't afford to buy it. And it was a blue crucifix like this. And so when we saw this later on, and it was a blue crucifix. It was even bigger, and we did have the money for it. We saw it in Assisi, Italy, and we bought it. And I love it. I cherish it. It's it's a gorgeous. It's it's an icon. It's painted. It's not print. Uh, it's three dimensional. You can see the halo of Christ uh, comes off and looks downward. It's really, really beautiful. So yeah, uh, I love it. It's uh, it's kind of our family heirloom crucifix, and uh, it is it is beautiful. I love to pray at it and we have it kind of uh in a high traffic area and when i go through sometimes i kiss it sometimes joy kisses it and sometimes i see the kiss kids kissing it uh one day i saw an i love you sticker on it kind of cute i was kind of horrified that there was a sticker on my nice crucifix but <laughs> it came off okay uh so yeah that's where we got the crucifix okay everyone well thanks for watching please like please subscribe so you get more of these live streams and I'm going to go off and be with my family. Y'all go be with your family and your friends. Uh, please pray for me. And tomorrow is my big birthday. I have a birthday tomorrow. So I would really appreciate it if you'd say a Hail Mary for me. My birthday is on Passion Sunday this year. So um, thank you for all the well wishes and for the prayers ahead of time. I do appreciate that. And till next time, remember that our Lord Jesus Christ said that you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. Godspeed, everyone. See you soon.